Good evening. Uh, it's great to see so many faces, familiar faces, and some new ones as well. So we can talk a little bit about Mercia and educate you to what we've done, doing, and going to do. Presenting will be myself, Mark Payton, Chief Executive, and Martin. Martin Glanfield will come up and present uh, a little bit more to the progress the business is making in terms of its financials as well. I think this is a really important slide, actually, just to set some of the context, actually, about the environment we all find ourselves in, uh, in the public markets, if you like. So strong liquidity across the group. And what we mean there is Mercy has got approximately £300 million of unrestricted cash. So that's in our funds and on our balance sheet. And I'll talk to both of those in a moment. And the reason why that's important is if you sort of look at our investment activity going forward, that's a two to three year. So let's assume for whatever reason we can raise no more funds anymore and our balance sheet runs, is running down. That's a two to three year run rate with no activity in terms of fundraising. And actually we're fundraising very, very well. So that's a very robust position to be starting from. And these funds are what we call long dated or closed end. So they're not subject to redemptions. They're 10, 12-year funds, they're evergreen funds, and they cannot have capital withdrawn from them. We push capital back to investors from realisations. The um, portfolios, and for those that are familiar with Mercy, you'll be very familiar with what we do, is we back businesses that have quite modest capital needs. That's always been our model. We're a regional investor, and that's actually one thing that makes those regional businesses stand out, is they can do a lot with a relatively small amount of money. Um, that means that our portfolio are very well-funded, they're well funded by us as well as co-investors, but we only back businesses that if the investment community changes and retrenches, we continue, continue to support those businesses. And that's really important, actually, when you're investing through the cycle, as Mercia has always done. So well-funded portfolio, low capital needs, and really strong, and we'll talk to some of the uh, commercial progress across what is a very diversified portfolio. I think this point's really important. So if you look at our balance sheet investments, and we'll talk again to that a little later, 1.4% by their value is our total exposure to the public markets. And actually, if you look across that as a sort of an asset base for Mercy, so roll in the cash, roll in the net asset value, that's less than a percent. So our exposure to public markets in terms of our own investments is tiny. Um, as a business, sustainable, profitable business, and we have a progressive dividend. Martin will talk to that dividend policy going forwards. Debt-free, there's no debt in Mercy at all. And actually on our balance sheet, about 50 million unrestricted cash. So well-financed business. We're not coming to the market to raise money in any time soon. And I'll talk to the 2020, uh, Mercy of 2020 in a moment and where that is. But again, despite the turmoil going around us, which we can't control, frankly, we believe we're well on track to achieve that 2020 over a three-year period. I think quite importantly, we're at a midpoint at the moment. So we're one and a half years into that three-year period. And that schematic on, on, on the other side there just shows where our offices are. We've opened a Bristol office just recently. Very much the passion of Mercia is investing out in the UK regions, typically taking the capital from the capital and deploying that through one of our eight offices across the UK, about 125 people uh, in Mercia doing that. It's important just to spend a few, few moments on this slide because it talks to what is quite unique about what Mercia does, which it combines its balance sheet, its proprietary capital activity with our profitable fund management activity and interlinks those two. So on the left side, on our fund management side of things, um, that's, uh, as I said, a profitable operation, recurring revenue coming through that on those long dated funds. That's very important for us in terms of longevity of earnings of that group. That, of course, is where we're nurturing businesses that can come across to our balance sheet. So across here, we've got about 400 companies across our managed funds, 260 or so are venture-based businesses. On our balance sheet, we've got about 20, um, 20 businesses on the balance sheet. All of those have been co-investments alongside the funds. So this is a very important source of deal flow into this point here. Our proprietary capital, a very focused approach there. As I said, it's investing alongside the funds into portfolio selectively in that respect. Uh, we are a selective investor in a number of our funds, particularly if we're looking into new areas, trying to grow new areas, we'll invest in those funds on a selective basis. And to the acquisition point at the very beginning that the conversation was just going on about, absolutely, we are looking at acquisitions, we're looking at value to build through that respect, and we have the cash to do that. So again, that's a use of our proprietary capital. And what that does is you bring those together, and we're focused actually on capital growth and yield. 
So the, the whole business and the whole business model of Mercia is grow NAV per share and grow yield, grow the progressive dividend. And on the one side, so I talked about what if we don't raise funds, hopefully this, this will reassure you that that was, that was hypothetical rather than real, is that we've got three discrete pools of capital that we are constantly raising funds from. So the first is our individual investors, like yourselves, ourselves. So EIS and VCT. We're in the top four, top three, top four managers in that class. Um, if you're in EIS and VCT, the chances are maybe some of you are in our EIS and VCT funds. If you look at the size of that market for EIS, 1.6 billion, VCT 1.1 billion was raised. So a huge amount of capital being raised into that area. Our VCT, we raised circa 40 million just recently. And we've raised about 25 million in EIS. Um, and that's growing. So two big markets where we're growing through, actually on a track record of delivery, we're growing through in that regard. So great opportunity to continue to scale that part of our managed funds. Underneath that is British Business Bank, really important actually provider of capital across the UK regions. We're very fortunate to manage about 40% of the existing British Business Bank regional funds and those are in debt as well as in venture. There was an announcement a while ago about the next generation of those funds coming through, 1.6 billion of those and of course we'll be going towards those as well and we'd like to think we can secure some of that capital going through. Now those have started, so the southwest one has started to go out through the system so that next generation is coming through over the next one to three years. And then the final pool of capital in respect of our managed funds is institutional capital, typically pension funds. And that's through our debt funds, and Martin Six Across actually our debt funds and manages those, and our private equity funds, so um, Greater Manchester Pension Fund, West Yorkshire Pension Fund. So regional pension funds such as those are important providers of capital into our debt and into our private equity. So that's the source of distribution, if you like, on that left-hand side of the scale in terms of funds that we manage today and we are constantly raising going forwards. And this was this 2020 that a number of you will be very familiar with, we set out about 18 months ago, where what we're looking at is generating 20 million on a profit before tax basis, PBIT basis, um, per annum, but averaged over a three year period. Okay, so that's important to recognize that averaging over a three year period. And that's sort of growing our NAV per share as we grow through that way. And then of course our AUM growing our assets under management through our third party funds and management predominantly, again, that's at 20% on average over that three year period. And if you look at the table across there, that's our, our um, prelims this year. So the first year of the 2020, PBIT at 27, AUM starting there about a billion. So we're on that journey and we are confident that the, the three year objective, the sort of combined 60 million and 1.5 billion, will get through to that. Martin. Thanks, Mark. It's the green one, isn't it? It's the yeah, don't press the red. Don't press the red. <laughs> um, hi, good evening, everybody. And as Mark said, it's great to see um, some familiar faces. I'm going to take just a few minutes uh, to summarise um, our most recent results, which I appreciate for some of you, you'll have seen these already because these were announced in July and it was the year to March 2022. Um, and actually, what was good about those results was that for the second year running, as you can see here, our profit before tax was actually greater than our total revenues. And I, you know, like to think that you can see that speaks to the quality of the business. And in fact, since March, despite the political and the economic chaos that's all around us, you know, I'm pleased to say that you know, Mercia is navigating its way through um, unhindered. Um, you, we also report adjusted operating profit, which is a combination essentially of, of, of cash generated through our fund management activities and also uh, interest that we're beginning to earn on some of our investment activities. As Mark said, we've got circa 50 million now, and at the end of March, we had 61 million. And we had a 14% increase year on year in our net asset value per share, which is, uh, I guess, one of the um, measurements that the city looks at in terms of growing our balance sheet um, relative to the number of shares in issue. So I'll try not to blind you with too much of this. This was our profit loss account um, for the year to March 2022. Um, you can see that during the year, part of that you know, £27 million pound of profit was the fact that we, we made an eight, £10 million pound gain on the sale of Ferradium, which was, interestingly, a, a battery technology, a sodium ion battery technology business um, that we'd been involved with from the beginning and were able to sell that for, a, uh, for £100 million pounds, um, to Reliance Industries of, of India. Um, and also, uh, in the year to March, our balance sheet portfolio of circa 20 uh, direct investments was also performing strongly from a valuation perspective 
and uh, part of our profitability was driven from fair value uplifts. Um, you'll see here our finance income considerably increased year on year and, and that arises from the fact that within our balance sheet investments, which we've been doing now for circa eight years um, since our IPO, um, sometimes we'll put equity instruments in, sometimes we'll put loan instruments in, those loan instruments will have a coupon typically and a conversion premium or a discount for the next equity round. And when those loans convert, um, very helpfully, the structuring there um, helps uh, generate additional profits for Mercia. Um, we've progressed so fast and so far in the last two years that we've gone from being a loss-making, non-corporation tax paying business uh, to one there now that we are actually now paying corporation tax. We've used up all of our historic tax losses from the early years. Um, so where do our revenues come from? And they largely come from our different asset classes that we're managing. Mark's just talked about just under a billion at March, which was sort of 959 million. And then you can see uh, just after the year end, we raised, as Mark mentioned, the 40 million of new VCT funds. And also we raised a, an EIS fund, a 5 million EIS fund, which is the 45 in total there. There wasn't a huge year on year movement from the 940 to the 959, but the reason for that was success. If you look at the distributions column, and that is money being returned to investors, whether it's our EIS investors, our VCT investors, or our um, you know, British Business Bank investors through dividends and returns when we sell the assets that we've invested in, uh, during that year we actually return £90 million across the piece to our investors. And of course some of that you'll see there, the proprietary capital was the £3 million we paid in, in dividends to our shareholders. In terms of quality of earnings, one of the things that we track is what percentage do our total revenues represent as a percentage of the total assets under management. And typically we've been running at about 2%, which is a very healthy percentage um, compared with many other asset managers. And just that dip there, which we've highlighted, is only because in, in, 20, in the year to March 2020, three months before the year end, we'd acquired the three Northern VCT contracts and so we had, at the year end, we had the total additional 270 million of assets under management, but we'd only had three months of the fund management revenue, so that the, the dotted line really represents what the annualised version of that percentage would have been. So 2% is a very, say, a very healthy base fund management fee. <coughs> Again, just sort of moving on through our, our published results, this is our very strong balance sheet. I think the, the night before we floated, I think our balance sheet was... 12 and a half million pounds and, and now we've just passed the 200 million mark um, eight years later um, and the largest components of that is the investment portfolio um, which was 10 million the night before we floated uh, and is now uh, 120 million um, and the cash balance um, at March of, of, of just over 61 million pounds um, so a very healthy balance sheet the direct portfolio was <coughs> grown really well during the year despite the Faradian sale um, you see the fair value movements and overall that increase across year on year increase from the 96 million to the 120 was a 24% a increase uh, in the value of the portfolio. So a 200 million balance sheet, plenty of cash and a very exciting maturing um, balance sheet portfolio in addition to our funds under management. This is the portfolio, which Mark will talk about in more detail, so I, won't, I promise you I won't take you line by line or number by number through all of this, uh, except to say that it's, it's very well diversified. Mark's already mentioned we only have actually one uh, quoted company in there, which is my health check. Um, and these businesses um, are, are really developing, very exciting, growing, um, and um, for all the right reasons are relatively insulated from what is going on you know, in the wider market. Um, from a, a cash position, it's not just about generating um, you know, paper profits. We're very focused on generating cash as well. So you can see that our sort of fund management activities during the year generated you know, over 9 million of cash. Um, we put 20 million to work into the portfolio. We had 1.5 million back from, from the portfolio companies. Um, and, uh, and we're, yeah, we're just, I'm very pleased to say we're in a really, really strong liquid position. And again, we have no debt. We have no need to come back to the public markets to raise money. Um, and finally, for a, a young um, and relatively small AIM company, um, I'm sure you'll be familiar here with many of these names, which are blue chip, long, 
holding um, fund management organisations themselves, and we're you know we're, we're really pleased. We love to go and see them every six months. Um, we have a great share register for a company of our our age. I'll pass back to Mark to talk a bit more about the balance sheet portfolio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. And what I should say in that slide as well, 17% of the business is owned by the board and management and employees. And actually, every single one of our employees has share options, and many of them are actually shareholders as well, So, which is really important for us on an alignment uh, basis. So I'm just going to go fairly swiftly through the, the remaining slides but happy to take questions on them in more detail afterwards. But this really just maps out the investment activity. And as Martin said, this was the last financial year end. So this is our, 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 our pre prelims from last year. I think what's important is just to say, well, if you look at the six months or in our six month period, it's, we're on track to sort of this. So, so what we're seeing, and this is really important. The thing I need to say about this is the reason, reason why we're on track here is that if you look at this bit here, over the last two years, we've returned about a quarter of a billion of investment returns to our investors. So we need to start rebuilding our portfolio because we sold a lot of them. So up here at the moment is all about re rebuilding, our, particularly our venture and private equity portfolio. So that's, these are fantastic returns, you know, three times the overall investment we put out there, we return back to investors. But we're now very much in build and deploy mode now. We will still see sales coming through, and we have been selling businesses coming through, but not like, not to this extent. Um, and, and we're really comfortable with that because actually the businesses we sold here are the ones that we built in the last economic downswing. The economic downswing is where we make our best hay, frankly. So that's where we're investing at the moment. Martin's just talked about the top 20. These are the top 10 and some key features. Firstly, the diversified portfolio, so across multiple sectors. They're all maturing in terms of age, so these are very much not early stage businesses anymore in revenue growth. But the also in the important point here is we own a material part of these. So when we talk about selling Faradian or Oxygen the year before, when you own 20, 30, 40% of those businesses and you sell them for 100 million, that's quite a lot of money coming back to the group. And this excludes our funds. So every balance sheet, uh, business has a position in our funds as well. So we'll typically add another 20% on top of that, which our funds are, uh, have as well. So we have a strong influence over our businesses. And that's important because our model is a proactive investor. We take a board seat on most of our businesses. We will add and help management build the team up and we will help them accelerate the growth of the business. So that influence is important to us. And again, this is the second end of that. I talked earlier about the model and the shadow portfolio that we're tracking in our funds. This is that shadow portfolio. So these are the businesses that are, we're looking at from a balance sheet perspective when the timing is right for those to come across. And coincidentally, we just announced, I think, yesterday that we've done two of those, hence the dotted line. So Axis Spine, fabulous business, in lots of respects, speaks to the Mercia model. So, you know, out in the regions, outside of London in terms of investment activity. We created this from day one. So went in there with CDIS, EIS, built that business through from 2016. And then it becomes a direct investment 2022. And this is really focused on um, sort of anterior, lateral coming in, spine straightening really, maintaining pain release, etc. FDA approved our investment alongside a US med tech investor. It's in our scale. It's signed up, I think now seven distributors, another six coming through. And this is all about sale, selling now. It's a really exciting product. And then equally exciting and probably relevant to the, the sort of clean tech theme that's coming through here is Nova Pangea. Again, a business out in the Tees Valleys, you know, red car. It's got its own manufacturing plant. We've put money in this business to start scaling it. What it does is it takes biomass, wooden material, waste wooden material. About 50% of that gets converted actually into sort of sugars, 50% into what's called biochar. Those sugars go through to aviation fuel. So we're looking at building aviation fuel, that SAF thing here, the sustainable aviation fuel piece. 50% in biochar, which is in feedstock, soil improver. Um, it's used in uh, charcoal in for green steel production, etc. Very, very efficient. The plant that they're building should be able to process about 12 tonnes an hour of this stuff coming through. Some very high profile um, organisations they're working with, such as BA. So again, really proud to be part of this, created, worked, supported in our funds before it came over to the balance sheet as an investor. So my last minute, so I will just conclude on the summary here, which is, it is the sort of points really we sort of like you to walk away with, which is, you know, strong position, strong liquidity, 
debt-free, and a commitment to a progressive dividend policy. So very important first point. We haven't spoken about the developments that a number of you will be familiar with what's happened in terms of VCT, EIS, SME. So the sunset clause going, SIS being improved, the SME definition moving from 250 to 500 people. Lots of really positive developments in the market that we invest in. Our funds, long dated, not subject to redemptions, etc. Very good place to be. Well funded portfolio, limited exposure to public markets and a robust model. And I'm sort of flippantly saying this is that the stress is in the market, not in Mercia. I'm rather hoping that you've gathered from this presentation we're in very good health and are continuing to perform. Thank you very much for your attention and time. Can I just, sorry, Chris, can I just add? Yeah, of course. We, we, we are going to do an investor meet coming. Something that's really important for me is to have more conversations with our private investors. We have an investor meet company. We'll post it probably as an RNS uh, reach, which will give the details on the 1st of November where we'll do a lot more granularity on some of our portfolio, etc. So I just wanted to remember to do that. <laughs> okay, no problem at all. We've got some questions. Have you asked it? Here we are. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. It's okay. It's all Hello. That's it. Okay. Um, I just have a question, general question, is about, about um, are you, do you focus your attention on any sector? Mm. So, so, we, so, because we've got this suite of asset classes, so if you, there's a common theme in what we do, which is proactive and supportive, be it debt, private equity, venture. Within venture, we do have a sort of technology slant, so we look at life sciences, we're looking at sort of physical deep tech as well. We've got software plays in there and actually entertainment, virtual reality, Endreams is one of our uh, businesses, one of the leading VR software developers actually out there. And that gaming area, Soccer Manager is another great one of our businesses. So, so gaming, virtual reality, that sort of area is quite important to us. So there, there are four themes across our tech spectre, uh, spectrum that we're investing in. Uh, question down there, Peter. Sorry. Chris. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Sorry, go on. Hi, C can you please extrapolate uh, in terms of the benefits that you have had from acquiring the VCTs, perhaps vis a vis the previous manager, and how is that reflected in the model? of Mercia generally? I don't know whether that's a clear question or not. You know, I, I, I'm going to do the politics one and answer a different question maybe, but hopefully maybe <laughs> answer your question as well. So, so what, what I'll do, if you don't mind, I'll divide that into two things and give one part to Martin because part of any acquisition is the process that leads to it. Yeah. So, so, uh, and I'll let Martin answer that point because I think it's really important. You know, most acquisitions fail, as we know. So we, we are very careful on what we acquire and why we acquire it. And then on the why, hopefully that's towards your point, is actually we look to that and say, OK, we're always beholden to our fund, either our shareholders in PLC or our fund investors. In other words, if we upset those two communities, Mercia doesn't exist. So, so if we, we took on the VCT fund management contracts with a commitment to the boards there that we would put additional resource to work because that was a fairly thin team, a fairly small team, and we think venture requires quite a deep level of resource and support. So, so the why was our model brought to that, and the why was one of, and we haven't spoken about deal origination, but part of it is, is growing and raising funds, and part of it is being able to deploy those funds. And by having eight offices and 125 people across the UK, we see most deal opportunities. So we're able to provide to those VCT boards good and strong deal flow, and we've seen that come through. But I think on the, on the, the acquisition point, Martin, because I think that's quite important, you know, why do that in the first place? Yes. Um, our acquisition strategy has been based around uh, more of the same. So complementary asset classes or asset classes where we, we already have uh, experience and uh, investment expertise. And the VCTs, by their very nature, are venture investors these days. And so with our existing large venture investment team, and all the existing companies in our other portfolios, venture portfolios, the real question in many ways is what was the benefit to the VCT shareholders of the manager moving from NVM private equity to Mercia? And, and the key benefit and the key reason why the boards of those three VCTs recommended the change to us was our greater depth of investment experience and also the fact we had a, a ready-made portfolio 
that the VCTs could consider investing in when the next round came along. Um, so it's been beneficial, I, I believe, to the, the VCT shareholders. Um, it's been beneficial to, to Mercia in terms that it helped transition us from being a young loss-making business on a journey to profitability to being a profitable business that's now paying a regular dividend. So I, I hate to use cliches like win-win, but um, it, it's been good for Mercia, as you've seen from these numbers, and, and we believe it's been good for VCT shareholders. Sorry, just, just a little bit more. I'm, I have to declare my interest because I'm invested in the VCTs that you have acquired. Yes. Uh, and, and therefore, I'm looking at a little corner of the whole model, which I found extremely difficult to, to work out, as it were. Um, um, and, uh, well, from what you have said, I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased about it. But the paradox, if I haven't actually seen the share price at the moment of Mercia, but it seemed to have stagnated when you have this lovely big model yes. with so many tentacles, yes. Yes. you know, and then in the end, the, the, I mean, I'm not, I'm not incentivized to actually invest in Mercia as, as it is. But I like some bits of it, which indirectly I am already in it. We have, we have quite a few people who are PLC shareholders, EIS investors, yep. and VCT investors. And that's why we, are, we put such an effort into reaching out to private investors, because they're very important to us, and we're very important to them. And it's about information sharing, et cetera. Share price is share price. I can't... No, yeah. and, and you, know, you can see in our annual report, you know, between Mark and I, Personally, we own over 8 million shares in Mercia. So, you know, in terms of the frustration and pain <coughs> that all of our shareholders are feeling, I can assure you that we are, you know, we are in pain. But, and again, this is, uh, when I, what I'm going to say now, I'll caveat by saying this is in no way a criticism of any of other market comparators, but the share price fall, f um, not because of performance, since the, the, the turn of the year, Mercia's is the least worst of the cohort that we sit in. Okay. Well done. Gentleman there. Yes, please. thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Um, so you mentioned earlier on that um, one of your strategies on investment is around modest capital needs in business. And I want, then you also mentioned with, with Axis Spine, how you've kind of been involved with this business since 2016 up to 2022. So perhaps you can kind of take us through an example of have you started with them in 2016 and have you ended up with much heavier investment in 2022 and what, the retur what returns you've seen from, from working with a company like that? So sh shall I, I, I will answer the, ox uh, the Axis one, but if I do Oxygen, so it takes you all the way through to the Exit, because it's the same sort of model. Okay. Um, so so with, with Oxygen, as we did with Axis, we knew the founder. So, so Peter Dines knows John Akros, who's the founder of Axis. I knew Ryan, who was the founder of Oxygen. So we knew the founders. We worked with them. We did a CDIS investment where that idea can be a little bit more fleshed out. And then when we like what we're seeing, we did this with both the businesses. We then come in with EIS, and we keep supporting it with that EIS money. Now, we're, what we're trying to do now is get them to a commercial inflection point. So where you've gone from a really interesting concept, an idea, and you've got the business model to be delivering. So it's about a business model point. And, once you, and what we're doing along that journey is we have a thing called Mercy Nucleus, where we do searches. We'll build management teams out, we'll build the board out, and we do that internally for our own portfolio. And we did that with Axis. We put Simon Cartmel on the board that Peter and I knew, and we did that with Oxygen. We built out pretty much the entire board and management team. Once that inflection point, that business model goes, ah, it's now delivering, because the business model is the bit you're pivoting around all the time. And the same was with Axis. So we were looking at, they've got an A-lift, so it's the anterior. Uh, traditionally, it's posterior when you're doing it with a, a straightening of the spine. So we're trying to figure out how that to get through, what hospitals are going to take it, market, how do we get into the US market, and the FDA approval. So it, with Axis, we got all of that going through. You, the FDA's approval there was about, about a year and a half ago. And now it's ready to build its distribution and start selling. So that's the commercial inflection point. And that's why the balance sheet comes in. And typically now, until your question on the VCTs, that's pretty much when the VCTs are looking for it as well. They're looking for that commercial inflection point. So it's no coincidence with Axis that the balance sheet and the VCT are coming in together. We didn't have the northern VCTs 
at the time of oxygen, so there was no VCT, it was just, just our balance sheet coming in. So those are the points we're going along. Then our expectation is that first point where the VCT and the balance sheet comes in, there's a three to seven year period now until an exit. So you could have had a five, six year period on the EIS funds, and sometimes at that transition, there is a sort of secondary for our EIS investors. We've had that before. So there's an opportunity. Most of them don't want to realize they want to carry on, but they can do. But then there's a three to seven year period. And if you look at Oxygen, what did that mean at the very end? Our balance sheet made about five and a half times its money and our EIS investors made 26 times their money. So that gives you a smooth IRR and that's the way we manage conflicts is we want to see the IRR pretty much the same for our funds and the balance sheet returns because that accounts for time which means your multiples need to be higher for the early stage investors. I'm hoping that answers. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I think um, one of the questions in my mind is that you've clearly invested heavily over six years yeah. with, with a company. It wasn't like, you know, a short, short-term vision. So that's yeah, quite well, interesting. We, we, we really passionate. I mean, I say 400 companies and 206 very flippantly, but we passionately believe in every single one of them. Uh, over 90% of what we invest in is outside of London. So these are regional businesses trying their hardest. And what we're trying to do is just help them fulfill their objectives and their ambitions themselves. Thank that's, you. That's brilliant. Mm. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. I'll just say our interim results will be out um, in early December, and we're looking forward to presenting those to the market. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thanks. <laughs>